Hi, and welcome to Biostock Studio. Today I'm joined via link by Wei Wu He, Chairman and CEO of Kazi Pharmaceuticals, and Martin Welshoff, CEO of BioInvent. The two companies have been partners since 2020, collaborating on the development of antibody BI-1206, which they will tell us more about. Welcome to both of you. And now I'd like to turn to Mr. He to talk more about the partnership between Kazi and BioInvent. Mr. He, could you tell us a little bit more about Kazi Pharmaceuticals and its business strategy? Thank you, Michael. Uh, Kazi is actually a commercial stage uh, a biopharmaceutical company. We are focused on uh, the Chinese uh, growing pharmaceutical market and global, uh, bringing global innovation to this market. We're mainly leveraging the Chinese growing market with the Chinese growing clinical trial resources to bring uh, uh, biotech innovation to, to the, mainly to the Chinese market. That's pretty much what we are focusing on right now. Great. Uh, well, um, we mentioned that uh, you've been partners with BioInvent uh, since 2020. What made you select BioInvent and antibody BI-1206 for your partnership? Well, you know, we since our current uh, market focus in the hematology oncology uh, space, uh, you know, what BioInvent has been working on for the last uh, many years it really intrigued us. They have a very innovative uh, discovery platform to discover a uh, functional monochrome antibodies to, uh, to in the cancer biology space, uh, and we fall we kind of fall in love with BI twelve oh six because this is actually a monochrome antibody can uh, reactivate many uh, antibodies like rotuxin, for instance as the patient is becoming resistant to uh, pharmaceutical drugs like rotuxin, uh, BI-1206 can inhibit the inhibitory receptor, the FC receptor, and reactivate the function of drugs like rotuxin. That's really a very important aspect of this particular molecule because many, many mon uh, monoclonal antibodies eventually will have resistance uh, after we used the, the drug for many years. Um, and we believe BI-1206 is one of those molecules can reactivate some of these monoclonal antibody uh, drugs. But after we have been working uh, together for uh, two years, uh, we find BioInvent is just a, a wonderful partner to work with. And uh, you know our team uh, has been uh, working very well together, and we are really looking forward to uh, working with BioInvent even more on the you know potentially even future pipe pipelines. Well, speaking of pipeline, now that uh, BI twelve hundred six is in clinical stages of development, how would you describe Kazi's role in, in this particular uh, phase? Yeah. So Cassie obviously is a playing a, a major role in the Chinese market. As we all know, China probably has the largest oncology patient population in the world. Uh, so this particular fact, you know, being the largest uh, uh, oncology uh, population in the world, it really is, first of all, it's a very important oncology market. Uh, but more interestingly, this uh, patient population is also a, a great clinical uh, development resources uh, for innovative drugs like 1206. And so this is exactly what we have been working together. Uh, you know, so we actually, ever since we've signed the deal, we already got approval to start IND to start the, the clinical development of 1206 in China. Uh, so, uh, so we are taking on the clinical development of this molecule in China. So the IND has already been approved, and we are really ready to uh, moving into dosing of the first patient in China. Uh, well, great. Uh, and uh, this is my last question, and it uh, you you've already hinted at the answer actually. But what are the next steps for twelve oh six in China? 
Well, I think it's, you know, we're looking forward to the dosing of the first patient. We still have to do a dose escalating trial uh, in China. But we believe, you know, by working with BioInvent as the drug moving to the phase two clinical trial, we love to have the Chinese uh, patient population to participate into a global phase two or a pivotal trial for 1206. Uh, this might actually uh, speed up the development of this drug globally. Uh, and obviously we will be working with the bioinvent team to uh, run clinical trial with global clinical trial standard, but speed up the enrollment of patient and hopefully bring in this drug to the market faster and maybe even cheaper. Well, well thank you so much, uh, Mr. He, for this uh, interview and uh, for your information. And um, we, we, we wish you all the best with your partnership. And now I'd like to turn to uh, Mr. Welshoff to, to learn more about BI-1206. In short, what makes 1206 unique? A couple of things, actually, and uh, some of the things we already mentioned. So first of all, I think uh, very importantly, uh, BR-1206 is currently at least the only in class. It's the only antibody that's really specific enough to only target uh, f gamma R2B, uh, the molecule that way we already has described. And uh, I, th I think it was quite challenging and speaks to the technical capabilities of BioInvent that we have basically produced such an antibody. That's number one. And then I think uh, it's the broad potential, broad application potential. So FC gamma R2B, uh, we are currently exploring this in, in two ways. Uh, first of all, in the non-Hodgkin lymphoma uh, trial, uh, where we're also very actively collaborating with uh, CASI, as already mentioned by Ray Wu. And there the target is directly expressed on the tumoral B cell. And when it's expressed there, we exploit uh, two mechanisms. First of all, we block the resistance mechanism that Ray Wu already has mentioned. And, uh, you know, when you look at uh, rituximab or under, uh, other anti-CD20-based therapies, at some time point, patients will become resistant. Uh, every patient probably at some time point in, in uh, his or her life. And then I think uh, 1206 could come in very, very handy. In addition to blocking the resistance mechanism, it also gives uh, its own activity by also uh, 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 addressing effector cells to the tumoral B cell. So that's in the context of the non-Hodgkin lymphoma. In the context of solid cancers, uh, there we're actually targeting FC gamma 2 b when it's expressed on the on immune cells of the tumor microenvironment. Uh, and when you look at the immune system, so there are two parts, the so-called adaptive as well as the innate, which is quite important. And we're addressing FC gamma 2 b on those uh, cells of the innate immune system. And as Weibu mentioned, so it's an inhibitory receptor. So we're taking away the inhibitory signal by uh, and through this then be activating the immune response of the patient so that's in the context of uh, solid cancer and on top of the cancer applications and we didn't touch upon that yet and i will not dive too deep into here in in in, in this uh, interview uh there's also potential application in autoimmune diseases yeah so um this is something that we are also exploring on the bioinvent side at least preclinically to establish proof of concept preclinically uh, and in our collaboration, as well as also in our clinical work, we're focusing on oncology only. Uh, the FDA has agreed to an ongoing phase 1A, um, 1-2A study with BI-1206, and uh, they have agreed that it may proceed onto an expansion stage, uh, which is based on the data generated so far. Could you tell us a little bit more about this data and, um, yeah, and why it's the basis for this FBA, FDA's decision? Yeah, so we had a very successful end of phase one meeting now a couple of uh, months ago. And as you summarized, Michael, so the FDA has agreed that we can move from our uh, dose escalation into dose expansion, which of course is, is very good news. And that's obviously based on very, very strong data. So we have shown during the dose escalation, even already at uh, smaller doses uh, that we can, good, can get a good overall response. And more importantly, what we also see is the high quality of the responses, because that's actually something that the regulatories, uh, the FDA and others are really focused on, because it's not only the overall response rate that you achieve, but also then the uh, 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 duration of response. So we, we have seen now already a couple of complete responses 
that are enduring more than two years, uh, which means without any other uh, additional treatment, which is actually uh, quite uh, exciting. And based on that, uh, the FDA has decided that we can uh, go on and go into the uh, dose expansion. And uh, there we will, um, you know, explore uh, 100 mic as a, as a flat dose. That's the dose that we have picked for the part two. But we also were looking at uh, smaller doses, and we do that also especially together with our partner, Cassie, uh, to ensure that we have the right dose. Because this is also something the regulators are really, really focused on, uh, that you do good dose exploration such that you have the dose that you need in order to achieve the right efficacy but also uh, just uh, use uh, what is required and not more. So I think uh, we are in a very, very good position there. Jumping to, let's say, the market potential, uh, how would you describe the market for 1206? It's actually uh, quite large. Uh, and, and that's also something that Wei Wu already has mentioned. So uh, 1206 uh, can not only be used to reinvigorate uh, response to rituximab or, or maybe potentially pembrolizumab and other antibodies, uh, which are all blockbuster antibodies. And of course, when you look at those, for instance, pembrolizumab uh, has, a, has a huge market potential, uh, but still it's just addressing 10 to 15% of the patient population. So there's a huge room for improvement. And if you can just, uh, you know, uh, make those drugs work, uh, you know, a couple of percentage better, it's, it's a multi-billion dollar market. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a very large potential actually for 1206 in the market. And uh, finally, uh, what are the next milestones for 1206? Uh, specifically, when will you reach the significant milestone uh, of having an approved dr drug on the market in the greater China area? Yeah, so this is obviously the, the end goal that we're working for. And uh, I'm just coming back to what uh, Wei Wu already has mentioned. So we have now established a very, very good uh, working relationship, not only working relationship, but also otherwise. So I think Kasi and, and BioInvent is working together more or less as one team for BI 1206. And uh, as, as Wei Wu mentioned, so uh, Kasi was very successful in getting the uh, IND filed for China. That was end of last year. And now I think we're very, very keen to not only start uh, in, 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 in the West, so to speak, the, uh, the uh, expansion phase, but also to start to get the first patients in, in China, because as we were saying, that could help up to speed the uh, could help to speed up the process, because the non-Hodgkin lymphoma area is quite competitive in the West, and I think through CASI Pharmaceuticals, we'll be able to really tap into um, high-quality heme onc uh, centers in China in order in, in order to to you know generate more data quicker. And then, of course, uh, all the data that we then generate together will be used for the purpose of uh, the global development strategy. And then the final goal, of course, of our collaboration is then to get the drug approved in, in, in China. But there's uh, still some work to be done. Well, thank you so much, Martin, for telling us a little bit more about this candidate. And uh, I'd like to thank both of you for joining us today. Uh, it's been a pleasure meeting you, and uh, we wish you all the best for your continued collaboration.